are doing what? This is the recursion, right? Number of bits you find n is, number of bits you find n divided by 2, the floor plus 1. So anyone can say what basic operation you are doing here? Division. Division. We are doing a division, n over 2, and then we are doing addition, right? So addition and division. So which is more time consuming? Division, right? But if you look at this, we are doing one division and one multiplication here, right? So the number of additions you are doing is the same as number of divisions, right? So it doesn't matter whether you find the number of additions overall or the number of divisions overall, because in each step you are doing one division and one addition. So that's why I am telling additions, number of additions. But you can write the same thing as number of divisions and do the whole thing. It's not the same thing. Okay? Because we're doing the same number, one division and one addition. So either thing, either way you can find number of additions in the algorithm or the number of divisions in the algorithm. So just for a change, we are doing number of additions here, so count number of divisions, but same thing. Okay? Yeah? So now what we want, like we have the recurrence for the problem itself, the problem is this, and we have established a recurrence. Now we have to establish a recurrence for the number of additions, right? So how do we do that? Just look at the recurrence, how many additions we are doing to find uh, uh, for, bit one, uh, for integer 1, the number of bits needed to find, uh, uh, number of bits in integer 1 is? One, that's defined, right? The number of bits in integer one is one. You don't need to do any division or addition to find number of bits in integer one, right? So the number of bits needed to find, number of additions you need to find for integer one is zero. You don't need to do any addition. It's well defined, right? So a of n indicates the number of additions we are doing. Find the binary representation of uh, uh, to find the number of bits in integer n. So we have an integer n, a of n means what? The, the algorithm finds the number of bits so in, the, um, in the integer for integer n and by going to the algorithm, how many additions we need, that's what A of N means. So basically you are going to count the number of additions you are doing when you execute the algorithm for N N. Okay? Or the number of additions either way is the same. So we have also established for finding the uh, number of bits in integer 1, we don't need any addition because it's well defined. It's a basic condition. Number of bits you have to find for integer 1 is 1. So you don't need any addition or division, so it is zero, right? Number of additions needed is zero. So that's our basic condition for this records. So the for any n, it's going to be, I'll write it and then we'll look at it. Same thing as our other recurrence. The number of additions you're doing to find for integer n is what? number of additions you need to find for integer n over 2 plus 1. Why? Because to find for 40, the number of additions you need to find the binary representation of 20 plus one more bit, right? One more addition, right? Because if you see it increases by 1. So as you progress further, you do one more addition to the number of bits you have found here. So 5 bits is like what? 4 bits plus one more bit. 4 bits is 3 bits plus one more bit. So the number of additions you need to find the binary representation of n is one more than the number of bits you need, uh, additions you need to find for n over 2. Right? This is the recurrence for the number of additions. Same thing for the number of divisions. Okay? So this is for what? n greater than 1, right? Because n is 1, you, you need 0 additions. So you have to be careful of the limits. So this recurrence holds good for n greater than 1. Alright? So that's the recurrence for this. So, this is in the same form like we had for the factorial. Remember what was the recurrence we had for factorial number of multiplications? The factorial case we had what? 
k is 0 to the k is 1, right? 1 is not greater than 1, 1 is equal to 1. So you have to have your k greater than 0. If k is 0 to the k is 1, so you cannot have this uh, for k equals 0. So you have to start this for k greater than 0. So that's why I have k greater than 0, right? Remember the boundary condition is n greater than 1 for this one. Where only for the factor it was n greater than or equal to 1. Here it is n greater than 1. Because if n is 1, what we want to find the binary representation of 1 is just 1 bit. So that's our basic condition. You don't need to do any addition. So here n is strictly greater than 1. So it means 2 to the k has to be strictly greater than 1. Which means k has to be greater than 3. So either way you interpret it, you can get the boundary condition. Right? So what is that we want to solve? We want to solve this recurrence. A of 2 to the k is A of 2 to the k minus 1 plus 1 for k greater than 0. That's the recurrence we want to solve. Okay? Let's try to do it. If not, we can complete again next time. So let's finish off quickly. But go through it again. We will do one more problem like this so that we can make sure we get it. So now why I reduce to this form? Because now we have subtraction here. It's easy to apply the recurrence. Right? Because a, to, or a of 2 to the k is a of 2 to the k minus 1 plus 1. Right? So I can also say now what? a of 2 to the k minus 1 is a of anyone? If you have 2 to the k is 2 to the k minus 1 plus 1. Right? So similarly, a of 2 to the k minus 1 is what? k minus 2 plus 1. Like we had m of n is m of n minus 1 plus 1. Like m of n minus 1 is n minus 2 plus 1. Same thing, 2 to the k minus 1 is k of 2 to the k minus 2 plus 1. So why I wrote this? I can substitute now for a of 2 to the k minus 1, this. Alright? And I can say what? a of 2 to the k is a of 2 to the k minus 2 plus 1. This is from this. Then you have what? This is for a of 2 to the k minus 1. Then I have plus 1. So you should not forget the plus 1 here. So you have 1 more 1 plus 1. So this is a of 2 to the k minus 1 is just from the recurrence. So substituting for a of 2 to the k minus 1 here, I get a of 2 to the k minus 2 plus 1, plus this one more 1 is out there. And I have to account for that 1 there. Okay? So now, this is the same as what? a of 2 to the k is 2 to the k minus 2 plus 2. Right? That's what it is. I'm just adding the two ones. 1 plus 1. Right? Can we generalize it? Or if you want, you can go one more step. What is the one more step I said? You can say a of 2 to the k minus 2 is what? a of 2 to the k minus 2 is, just from the recurrence, if a of 2 to the k is 2 to the k minus 1 plus 1, so like that a of 2 to the k minus 2 could be what? k minus 3 plus 1. 1 less than this. a of 2 to the k is a of 2 to the k minus 1 plus 1. So likewise, a of 2 to the k minus 2 is a of 2 to the k minus 3 plus 1. So now I can substitute for a of 2 to the k minus 2 there and get what? a of 2 to the k is going to be what? a of 2 to the k minus 3 plus 1 substituted for a of 2 to the k minus 2 and then what else I have? Plus, plus 2, the plus 2 is there. This is what I substituted that for, a of 2 to the k minus 3 plus 1 plus 2. Alright? So, I can write a of 2 to the k is a of 2 to the k minus 3 plus what? Plus 3. So, you see a trend. A of 2 to the k is A of 2 to the k minus 1 plus 1. So this one and that one goes together. A of 2 to the k is A of 2 to the k minus 2 plus 2. So 2 and 2 go together. A of 2 to the k is A of 2 to the k minus
minus 3 plus 3, so it's a prime. So it's now easy to generalize it as a of 2 to the k is a of 2 to the k minus i plus i. Okay? So now we want to solve this further, right? C for what value of i you will give the basic condition. The basic condition is 2 to the 0. So for what value of i I put here, I can make this as 2 to the 0. What as 2 to the 0? I want to make this thing as 2 to the 0. So that I can say a of 2 to the 0 is 0. Right? So for what value of i I can make this 2 to the 0? The whole thing has to be 2 to the 0, so which means i has to be k. If i is k, the exponent is a of 2 to the power k minus k. Right? So if I put i as k, I get what? a of 2 to the 0. So if I put i as k here, I get a of 2 to the k is a of 2 to the 0 plus what? i. For what, what is i now? k. Because I am putting i equals k, right? So only by putting that, I am getting this term as 2 to the 0. Because i is k, k minus k is 0. So a of 2 to the power k minus k, that's how I got 0, so this has to be k. Right? So I'm putting i equals k. But a of 2 to the 0 is what? 0. So I can basically uh, get rid of this term and say a of 2 to the k is k. So that's your answer in terms of k. So now, so again, this is your final answer in terms of k, but now you have to transform that to our n. Remember our n was to the k. Right? So we got the answer and now final answer, but in terms of k. Now we have to transform that to our n. Right? So what we should do? Replace k with n. We solve, we wanted to solve for n, remember? And we did the substitution. n is 2 to the k and we did all these things. So we have to now replace the k with n. If n is 2 to the k, right, the left hand side is easy because we replace 2 to the k with n, we can say n, right? But what about this k? If n is 2 to the k, what can you say about k? Remember log of them that I did before? If n is 2 to the k, k is? Didn't I say before in the first class, I ask you to remember this? If log n to the base 2 is k, I can say n is 2 to the k. That's the relationship between logarithm and the binary exponent. Okay? If k n is 2 to the k, k is log n to the base 2. Alright? So I can substitute that for k. That's all it is. So this is now theta of log n. Right? Log n to the base 2 is theta of log n. So the number of additions you need to find a binary number representation of n is theta of log n. So it's a log n algorithm. Slow, not slow, it's quick basically because there's low complexity. Log n is very low complexity. Right? So what I did is I 